we're about to learn the right and the wrong way to build a French drain. And if you know anything about the drainage community, they get pretty feisty about the specific parts and methods used to build these things. That's why I made five different variations with a different variable tested each time so that we can put them to the test. By the way, the Colty contractor loyalty to certain parts or methods of building French drains is due to a psychological phenomenon known as the Ikea effect, which is just a way of saying that people greatly overvalue things that they helped build. And it makes sense too. Nobody wants to say that they could have made something better or worse, that they made something wrong. Anyways, I'm gonna dump a bunch of water on each of them and rank them by how quickly they drain out. But first, some notes. As you can see, I've let the grass grow for about a month to simulate reality as much as possible. The only water that has ran through them was during the first video that I made as soon as I built them, which actually got over half a million views. And then after that, just the natural rainfall that has accumulated in the last month. Now, I've seen other videos by other content creators where after the fact, they will put a digital clock in the top left or the top right of the screen, and that makes you worry they edited that a little bit. In this video, I'm gonna be using an iPad with a stopwatch app so that you'll know that I'm not editing with the timing and it'll be on screen the entire time even after I speed up the clips. Another thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting this bin under the discharge outlet so that we can actually look at the water quality that comes out. This will also help with timing because I'm going to stop each test when the time between each drip is one second. Also the table that the bins are on is on a pretty steep incline. You can take a look at this bubble level here and see that we've got a couple inches for every about two to three feet. Uh, this will make sure that all of the water in the bin when it drains goes out that end and not that end. And I'll get into that in a minute. Something that's really important is that all of these pipes are at the very bottom of the bins. There is no bed, like I didn't lay a couple inches of rock to put the pipe on top of. This is important to know because each bin will not be holding any water. All of it should be drained out. Finally, the last thing I want to mention is that right now, all of these bins and these pipes are dry. We're going to run a first test through without priming the system, and then we're going to run a second test while the system is wet, simulating a secondary rainfall event. This will give us a bunch of data points to compare in the end. And if you're curious how I actually built these things, here's how. <laughs> In the video that went viral, a whole bunch of people went, you're supposed to burrito wrap it. And yes, we do wrap the fabric all the way around for our clients. But in this case, I want to see what's happening. And so laying the fabric on top of the gravel serves its purpose. First up is no fabric, so obviously the cheapest option. This is just half rock, and then the same amount of dirt that I gave the other bins just right on top of that rock. On all of these drains, I tried to pour it slowly enough to keep it from overflowing, which it almost did here, but also quick enough that I'm not favoring one drain over another. If you're like me, you may have predicted that this would be the worst design, but it's not. I thought that maybe with the dirt settling in the last month, it would lead to some minor clogging in the drain. And that might even still be happening, but this drain is still faster than some others. Honestly, I thought the water quality was the worst of all of the bins, and you probably could have predicted that because there's no filter at all. Next, this French drain uses a specific type of filter fabric called woven weed barrier, which is not actually a fabric, but a lot of contractors use it. The thing I noticed about this as I was installing it was that if the fabric is flat, it's literally waterproof. Water cannot go through it. However, as soon as you bend it, the bending in the weaves allows for spaces for water to get through, which probably means water is only entering on the corner areas, not on the sides or the top and bottom. But hey, that's just my theory from what I saw. As you can see, this water is still pretty dirty, and my best guess is that dirt is probably getting through those holes as well. 
Next up is this white pipe, which is PVC. This PVC pipe has three holes drilled into the bottom half of the pipe. You'll be able to see them soon. But what this allows is as the water table rises, the water will be able to enter those holes and then flow through the pipe. One common trend I saw is that a lot of people think that PVC allows the water to flow quicker, and that'll take another video. One thing I am sure of though is that PVC gets brittle at a lot warmer temperatures than HDPE. For example, PVC's brittle temperature is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, while HDPE's brittle temperature is anywhere from negative 100 to negative 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now what this means is that when this pipe is in the ground, if the ground starts heaving or moving any, which it definitely does here up in Missouri in these clay rich soils, there's a possibility that that pipe could crack. We've seen it before and it's one of the reasons that we shy away from it, but I thought it was worth testing because a lot of people swear by it. French drain number four is your standard French drain with four inch corrugated perforated pipe. And the fabric that was used was four ounce filter fabric. Now this is filter fabric made specifically for French drain applications. Corrugated just means that it has ribs and the perforated part means that it has slots all the way around the pipe. So water can enter this pipe from 360 degrees. And the theory is that the fabric will filter the dirt to make sure it doesn't get clogged. But this brings up an interesting question because a lot of people think that the fabric eventually clogs, but we've never actually seen any clogged fabric or had to replace any in the last five years. So if you've ever actually seen this phenomenon or you have pictures of it, drop them below. Finally, the sad thing is I didn't record the first part of this while I was pouring it in, so what I'll do is I'll average the time it took me to pour the other bins and then subtract that initiation time from this timer. And then I decided just to record it again with a note that this drain is technically primed. However, that doesn't really matter because we all knew that this one would do the best anyways. This bin is the same as the last one, four inch perf pipe with four ounce filter fabric, except it has a 12 inch catch basin to capture surface water. This setup works extremely well, and if you're already digging a trench or you you already have one dug, it's highly recommended in most cases to just add these in where needed. The water that came out of this is very clear except for some debris maybe that found its way into the catch basin. And if you're wondering why that pipe is blue, it is our solid pipe, it's a stronger pipe, and it's what we use to connect catch basins and downspouts to discharge areas. So as a time lapse, these things are actually really cool to watch. I lined up all the videos at the same time, even if I didn't dump the water in at the same time. Which means, unfortunately, the final numbers will have a bit of a margin of error. With this speed, you can clearly see the water absorb into the soil again, and then slowly drain down into the rocks and eventually out the pipe. The first one to finish, again, is the French drain with the perf pipe and the 4 ounce filter fabric. And there's gotta be something going on here causing it to drain faster than the catch basin, which blows my mind. Although the catch basin one finishes not long after. The one on the far right with no fabric finishes almost a minute after these two do. And then finally the woven filter fabric and the PVC are the ones that are left and which was surprising to me because I totally figured PVC did not affect the drain rate but I guess maybe those large three holes at the bottom do make a difference. And in the end it does win by about 15 seconds over the awful woven fabric design. Alright here's the final leaderboard. All of these numbers are based on the time between when I first started pouring the water and one full second between drips. Again I have have no idea how the catch basin design lost to the standard French drain, and honestly, I thought the PVC would closely tie with the HDPE pipe, not be almost twice as slow. Due to the variation of these numbers, I'm actually starting to wonder if it was a good idea to measure to drips that had one full second between them. And the main thing anyone can learn from this video is that woven fabric is awful for a French drain. Well, I guess that settles it. Wrapping this video up, I've got two questions for you, which you should answer in the comment section below. The first is, which one did you think actually won? And the second question is, do you have any other ideas of things that I could test, other parts, other ways of creating these French drains? If there are better methods out there, we would love to know them so that we can improve our service and product for our customers. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've learned something. And if you're curious what it looks like to actually install one of these into a client's yard, we've got plenty of installation videos that you can watch and see what it actually takes to decide if you want to hire a contractor like Hyphen or if you want to try to DIY. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.